One of my favorite brands is this brand. They they sell water in a can. They're called Liquid Death. Well, their slogan is "Murder Your Thirst." The way they differentiated themselves, besides the obvious, is they created a lifestyle brand. And as opposed to the normal business thought of I got to appeal to as many people as possible, I want to attract the widest audience. They said, no, 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 we're going to attract the people that he calls other waters yoga accessories because they all look the same and it's just basically you know something you bring to yoga class. We're going to speak to the people that aren't spoken for. So he carved out a little niche audience, which was a small audience but a passionate audience that speaks his language, created a lifestyle brand, and because his brand is so powerful, even though they only do fifty million dollars. Dollars in sales a year. The valuation of the stock is at half a billion dollars. So they have over a 10x valuation just based on the brand. Welcome to the e-commerce marketing podcast, the highly rated digital marketing podcast that provides weekly digital marketing tips and strategies from some of the world's top digital marketers and e-commerce entrepreneurs that will help you take your digital marketing to the next level. Sit back and enjoy this power-packed episode hosted by Arlen Robinson, who is an e-commerce entrepreneur and digital marketing expert with over 20 years of experience. Hey, e-commerce marketing podcast listener! Are you looking to increase traffic and sales to your website? You can do this by launching your own affiliate program. Just visit getosi.com and sign up for a free trial today. That's getosi.com. Now get ready to hear from your e-commerce marketing expert of the week as they drill down to give you details on marketing strategies that can help grow your business. Welcome back to the e-commerce marketing podcast, everyone. My name is Arlen, and I am your host. And today we've got a very special guest, the marketing supervillain Jesse James Robluski. Welcome to the podcast, Jesse. Greeting, citizens. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Jesse. I'm really excited to talk to you. Um, you know, we're going to be going into a subject that I think has always really been a part of marketing, which is, you know, setting yourself apart. How do you uh, set yourself apart? How do you make your e-commerce marketing strategies different from the next company and from your competitors? So we're going to be talking about uh, differentiation amongst marketing and specifically e-commerce marketing. But uh, before we dive deep into that, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and you know how you got into what you're doing today? Sure, sure. So uh, I run an agency called Generations Beyond for about 25 years. Started doing websites when uh, we were getting AOL discs in the mail and uh, <laughs> had to do it via dial up. So I've been through, you know, even though it's only been 25 years, it's in, in internet years, it's almost like dog years. I've been through so many iterations and lifespans of different technologies and uh, kind of adapting to them and then, you know, getting, uh, you know, evolving out. So I, I was doing differentiation for clients before I even knew I was doing it. So I essentially wanted to stack the deck in my favor. So maybe you've experienced that a client comes to you, they say, hey, we're going to write you a check and you need to do marketing for me. And like you said at the beginning, you know, what makes your campaign any different from any other campaign out there? Give me something to sink my teeth into, because I know at the end of six months, you're going to say, I wrote you X amount of checks. They didn't get me X amount of sales and we're going to part ways. So let's let's fast forward six months. You know, once we hit that wall, how are we going to make yourself, you know, how are we going to make you guys stand out? So I kind of always had a, you know, maybe it's a selfish uh, inclination to kind of stack the deck so I could be successful as a marketer. And in turn, my clients were successful as well. Yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. And um, yeah, that's that's really all what it's about. And especially um, from your side of things, the agency model. Um, yeah, it's all about the results, of course, um, yeah. that you're going to get as far as if you're going to continue to work with the customers you have and then if you're going to be able to get new customers and then of course it's i think with you it really becomes a a uh trickle down effect because those customers that you've had success with you can use those as prominent testimonials to get one other business yep. so it yep. um, definitely becomes kind of a win-win for 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 all parties uh so yes thank you for sharing that jesse um you know uh, first off, I guess I'd like you to, you know, explain a little bit more detail what differentiation means in the context of marketing and why you feel it's 
critical for brands in specifically crowded market um, niches? Sure. So differentiation um, is kind of synonymous with the term decommoditization. So I, I kind of invented that term. But a commodity or when something becomes commoditized, the one thing that makes them special in a marketplace, when that special factor is no longer recognizable by the general public or that special factor really isn't that special anymore, um, that they become known as a commodity, right? So I can get right. what I can get from you, from somebody else for less of a price. Why should I go with you? There's really nothing special about you. So to illustrate mm -hmm. this, I use the term, uh, the, the example of uh, airlines. Let's go back to the 80s, right? Nobody yeah. really had brand loyalty of an airline. You bought a ticket on an airline based on price, right? I can get here to here for the cheapest. Then mm -hmm. some genius came up with the idea of frequent flyer miles. And that brand, you know, became really special and their sales increased significantly. And then what happened? Everybody started offering fr frequent flyer miles. So the one thing that made that person special, that airline special, slowly got eroded away. And eventually, again, they became a commodity. So uh, differentiation can be, you know, like a wave, something that's always evolving. But you always want to make sure that you're the one standing out. You know, people are going to copy you. But if your clients... In, in my industry, I'm sure it's very similar to yours. They're often intimidated at, at what we do because it is confusing or uh, they really, they're uneducated. So they can't tell the difference between why one agency is better than the other agency. So it's our job to make it as easy as possible for them to say, I want to work with that guy, that girl, because of blank. Yes. What's the blank? Yeah. 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 That's a, that's a great breakdown of the concept. It really highlights, you know, there's the importance of standing out, especially in today's competitive environment, not only with like what you're doing as a, from the agency model, um, which will help make people make a decision when they're deciding to work with you. But from an e-commerce business perspective, there are now more e-commerce businesses out there than, than ever. You know, a lot of this was um, accelerated, of course, during 2020 in the pandemic where businesses that didn't have an e-commerce platform, didn't have the ability to sell e-com or were not doing it that great, they kind of got their acts together in a short amount of time. And so this really, there was a lot of emphasis that flooding into the e-commerce markets in a short amount of time. So there's so many options when it comes to purchasing items. It, that's why you, you, you've got to stand out. You got to make a, your product or services different um, noticeably different from your competitors. Yeah, I mean, with with agencies, obviously, we have a little bit of a, a luxury because if someone wants to compare agencies, truly compare them. They got to make phone calls. They got to set up Zoom yes. meetings. They got to, you know, with, you know, compare and contrast with e-commerce. It's like click of a button. This one, this one, or this one. This one's the cheapest. I'm going to go with that yeah. one, right? So it's it's split right. second yeah. differentiation uh, compared to yes. the luxury of explaining exactly. to a client why you're different. <laughs> exactly. Um, so I wanted to see if you could share an example of a brand that successfully differentiated itself in the past decade or so. And what lessons can, you know, any emerging brands learn from it? Yeah. So my favorite, favorite story of the most recent uh, times is I'll use the, the, the perfect example, which is the ultimate commodity water, right? So water okay, right. is essentially free. Um, yes. So how the hell do you charge a premium for something you can get for free? <laughs> so right. one of my favorite brands is this brand. They, they sell water in a can. They're called liquid death. So yes. their slogan yes. is murder your thirst, right? And they, mm -hmm. the way they differentiated themselves besides the obvious is they created a lifestyle brand. And as opposed to the normal business thought of, I got to appeal to as many people as possible. I want to attract the widest audience. They said, no, no, no. We're going to attract the people that, you know, he calls other waters yoga accessories, right? Because they all look right. the same and it's just basically, you know, something you bring to yoga class. We're going to bring, you know, we're going to speak to the people that aren't spoken for. So he carved out a little niche audience, which was a small audience, but a passionate audience that speaks his language, created a lifestyle brand. And because his brand is so powerful, even though they only do $50 million in sales a year, the valuation of the stock is at half a billion dollars. 
Oh, wow. So they have over a 10 X valuation just based on the coolness of the brand and where it could go in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. And that's a, a great example. And it really puts into perspective, you know, how effective differentiation can be. Cause like you said, with water, you know, it's like, um, you, you know, water is water, you right. get water anywhere. What's the really difference. And it's interesting that you mentioned that because I think the first time I came across that brand, I, I started noticing cans and, and people drinking them. I'm trying to remember where maybe it was in the gym or just different places. And, um, my first thought when I saw it, because, you know, that's like, they, they, they're totally different than any other water company as far as their branding, their logo, the slogan, you know, liquid death. When I first saw it, to be honest with you, I, I didn't know what it was. <laughs> you know, I, I, my first thought was like, I did not, I wouldn't have thought it was water. I, I think when I first saw it, I thought it was like a, uh, an energy drink, you know, something like that. That was my first thought. Yeah. Was, I mean, by, by design, you know, one of the things yes. that he took into account, you know, I, I'm not yes. a drinker, but when mm -hmm. I go to a bar, everyone on the planet asks me, you drink, why not? Why don't you drink? Why don't you drink? So now you have this right. thing that looks like, a tall yes. boy, right? So <laughs> exactly. it kind of like reduces that anxiety as well. So it's he's he's firing on a lot of levels where yes. you could hold this can in a bar and you might be, even be the coolest guy at the bar because you have a can of water that's really cool and he has a really passionate yeah. fan base. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, 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 it's interesting to look at it that way. And you're right. It, it kind of fits in with those types of drinks, the Red Bull, yeah. those other type of energy drinks that have the kind of, you know, different types of style logos and the, the branding. And so somebody, like you said, at a bar drinking that doesn't feel left out because, you know, yep. although he's drinking water, you may not never know. Yep. Cause like I said, yep. I, I saw it, I thought it was an energy drink. So yeah, interesting stuff. And you're really interesting to see how these, this, the strategy unfolds in two real world scenarios. So, you know, looking forward, um, just want to pick your brain a little bit. How do you see the strategies for differentiation evolving, you know, with the advent of these new technologies like AI and machine learning, which is, of course, the talk of the town in pretty much all spaces, <laughs> you know, I can't get around not talking about AI. So what, what do you think? Yeah, absolutely. So differentiation is going to be immensely more, uh, 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 I don't say powerful, but needed. Um, if you think of, if you think of the world before the internet, right? before e-commerce, you went to the store and you might've had one or two choices of anything, peanut butter, whatever. Now we have the internet. Um, Seth Godin, who's an author says people have an explosion of choice, right? So now there's yeah. an infinite amount of more choices that you have the ability for. You bring in AI, I mean, aside from the marketing aspects, aspects of it, where you can create, you know, a thousand banner ads with the click of a button, it's also going to influence manufacturing. So now those thousands of peanut butters you had before on the internet, very easily going to crank out more brands, more ability to create more product. And those might turn into tens of thousands of brands. So there's just going to be more and more and more options and choices out there. Um, it just makes it that more, that much more important or harder to do business. So you need to uh, employ differentiation. I mean, yeah, if, yeah, if, for if sure. everybody can create a peanut butter brand with the click of a button, <laughs> you know, why would you, why would you even get into that market? Right? Yeah, that's true. It's a, so everybody now has the power to, to come up with a million and one <laughs> slogans, yeah. a million and one, uh, you know, different types of ad campaigns and logos. So yeah, it's like you said, it's, it's good and it's, it, it's bad. You know, it's, it, it, it in a way it, it does level the playing field a little bit for some of the smaller brands, some of the brands that, you know, don't have, you know, huge budgets to, you know, spend on, on ad agencies that are, are doing these massive campaigns that involve a lot of research, a lot of testing, um, you know, the smaller mom and pop e-commerce, um, e-commerce company or e-commerce brand can just hop on to chat GPT and, you know, within a few hours, they can come up with some pretty good marketing campaigns from email campaigns to messaging for their website, uh, you name it, all of that can be created and, and, and just, you know, with the, within the, the typing of just a few prompts. Sure. So yep. it's, um, and that aspect that, you know, I, I think it's good because it does, um, really 
foster a lot more competition. And, you know, as we all know, competition, it, it is good when things are, are level and, and, and more competitive. That's when, uh, you know, things can get better for the consumer It's going to be a lot more options and it's going to keep brands um, on their toes as well as marketing agencies. So, um, yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, I think it's uh, overall, it is a, a good thing. Now with all of your, of course, years of experience, um, what have you seen as being, you know, your most challenging aspect of implementing a differentiation strategy and how did you overcome it? Yeah. So the, the challenge is always, always, always the client and fear of change, which isn't, which isn't relegated to just clients. Everybody has a fear of change, right? So right. when we, whenever I get into a meeting, whether we're talking about differentiation or not, a client's never going to sit down and say, okay, you know, we've been doing this and we just want to hire somebody to keep churning out the same stuff. They always say, we're hiring you because we want to go in a different direction. We want to stand out. We want to take it to the edge. And then ultimately when you get them to the 99 yard line, they're like, whoa, you know, let's, let's sand off the rough edges. Let's make it a little bit more safe. Um, so that's, that's always been the challenge and something that I'm working on um, to kind of mitigate that at the last minute. All right. So, uh, you know, figuring out, I tell, I tell my clients, I'm, I'm really, really, really good at differentiation. I suck at mind reading. All right. So I'm going to tell you, if you have a problem being funny or being on camera or charging a premium because you know you're not the best in, in your industry, uh, tell me now and we'll, we'll make those decisions together. There's no one way to differentiate yourself. Let's put all the cards on the table and then we'll make an educated choice on what uh, differentiation tactic you know we're going to choose. And when we get to that scary place, we're not going to use our gut. We're going to use data. Say, look, this yeah. is the, what the data supports. If we go this route, if we go with the same old way that we've been doing things, the data supports that. And it's a right. simple, you know, logical uh, uh, decision as opposed to this emotional thing where, mm. I don't know, I'm changing everything. I could lose my life. Uh, so <laughs> kind of right. quelling those concerns. All right, right. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good to hear. And that's a great way to go about doing it. Just, uh, you know, backing your what you guys come up with, what you guys plan to implement, the creativity, the campaigns, strategies, backing that with, with data, you know, and that's the best way to do it because I can definitely feel your pain. I understand where you're coming from. When you get to that, those points, you get to the, um, you know, the, the 99 yard line or whatever you're, and then you say, okay, so we're going to do, you know, they agreed already, but then when they see what it is and how different it is from what they were doing in the past, then, you know, they can get a little, a little antsy and a little uh, gun shy, I guess you could say, which is understandable because everybody is averse to change, you know, no matter how we fight it and how much we fight it in all aspects of what we do in business and in our personal lives. It's, it's, it's tough to, to accommodate change. But you know, like you said, if you're coming from the angle of saying, okay, you can go down this road with what you're doing right now, but you know, your the data is showing that, you know, your sales are going to continue to decline or, you know, but if, if we go with these different strategies, which have been proven by some other brands, you know, nine times out of 10, you know, you're going to have a, a boost in sales and, and things like that. So yeah, it's, it's good to see that you um, are approaching things with your clients uh, in that way to so keep things based on data. Now, um, I'm always one to really understand that m a lot of growth really happens when you're learning from the mistakes and the pitfalls. So I want to see what common pitfalls, you know, businesses should avoid when attempting to differentiate their products and services overall. Yeah. So there's a chapter in my book that I basically say it's not a hard and fast rule that you have to be fully authentic with yourself. And I'll get into what that, what that really means. But if you choose a differentiator that is authentic, it's a huge leg up, right? So it's just gonna, it's just gonna increase your, your chances of success, right? So inauthenticity, lightning rod of a topic, but you saw what happened with Bud Light, right? They, they put some, you know, put some emphasis on uh, basically virtue signaling on a, on a certain community. Everybody came down on them. They were just 
you know, putting something out there that wasn't really ingrained in their, in their DNA, right? Everyone's very right. quick to be like, oh, we sell product, but we're also saving the planet, you know, just throwing money at this charity, throwing, and people can see right through it. Um, yes. And nowadays, you know, if you do it inauthentically, people will call you on it. So I think, you know, trying to, if you're selling gas guzzling vehicles and you're trying to be, you know, Mr. Green company and, you know, saving the trees and all that, people are, are really wise to that. Um, yes. You know, I think that's the, the biggest, say, challenge or advice I can, I can give, you know, just be authentic in your, in your differentiation. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree. And I, I do see it being a trend, especially things like, you know, the virtue signaling that you that you mentioned, associating your brand with, you know, helping a certain community or associating your brand with sustainability efforts. When, you know, you look at some of these companies where you look back maybe just a year ago, even months ago, <laughs> there's no mention of any of that. Yeah. They, they don't have a history or track record of, of supporting any of these things. And all of a sudden, you know, you see all of this stuff about sustainability and supporting certain groups. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, brands can, you know, have a change of identity, I guess you could say, and they can decide to support things. You know, they are, every, every brand has that right to do it, but you, you have, it has to be authentic. It has to be something that's tied to your company's core mission. Because like you said, most consumers these days are really educated and can see right through all of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. And um, the, of course, it's so easy to, to look back and to, to, you know, with AI these days, you know, you could get a full history of, of just about anything, any yeah. company and what they did 10 years ago, what were, were their missions on these dates. And so, um, you know, we have to be careful because yeah, people will see, see, uh, you know, straight through some of those, you know, inauthentic efforts, uh, for sure. Um, now, uh, Jesse, as we get ready to, to wrap things up, um, you know, as consumer behaviors overall continue to change, because they're always changing, um, how would you say companies would need to adapt their differentiation strategies to remain relevant and competitive overall? Yes, I mean you use the you use the perfect adjectives, uh, you know, relevant and competitive, um, and it's a it's a constantly evolving uh, thing. I have clients, you know, you, you, chances are you're not dealing with a powerful brand owner that's fairly large who's very young, right? So all sure. all of the more established brands, rightfully so, are 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 managed by seasoned executives. Everyone doesn't matter who you are, thinks social media is like super sexy, right? right. But a lot, right. Of, a lot of the times the executives that want to be on social media, they don't know how weird of a place social media is. They can't read the room. So sometimes yes. I come back to them and I'm like, all right, here's what's going to be successful. And they're like, who the hell would ever like even watch this or like it or so staying relevant. I don't know how to, how to, how to uh, you know, better wrap it. If social media is included in the future of your brand expansion or differentiation and you're not on it and you're not authentically interacting with people and kind of reading the room, at least bring someone on board that you trust that's going to, you know, and that's everywhere, you know, knowing, knowing where your market is and knowing what your market wants. If you're completely shut off and saying, ah, this TikTok thing, these kids today, like, Guess what? Right, right. That's that's a huge indicator of where your brand is going to be in, in five to mm -hmm. 10 years. So if you're closed off, um, chances are you're not going to be very differentiated a decade from yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah, very true. And that's a great example with TikTok. You know, it seems like, yeah, definitely adaptability seems it does seem crucial as the market evolves, because we do have all of these new new platforms, these new marketing channels. And, you know, of course, there's, you know, a lot of brands that are out there, like you said, that are older and been around for a while may have been used to doing certain things but you know if they don't have that expertise in-house they better find somebody that can help them with these efforts you know and typically it's going to be a younger person somebody that's a little bit more social media savvy they may have grew up with social media they're on TikTok. they're all in it and um you you, you know you you we do have to especially as an older brand you do have to 
to look to the, you know, some of the younger generation and, and see how they can help you, you know, navigate these things because, you know, it's stuff is very different, very different, you know, um, before social media, you know, you know, I know that there was really the only options when it comes to, to advertising was really radio, TV, um, news, papers and magazines. And that's really about it. I don't think there was really anything else. Yeah. Uh, other, and, um, you know, now there's like a whole slew of other channels to really get out there and, and market. And so, yeah, I, I think it's only going to keep increasing. Yeah. I mean, we're being, we're being a little stereotypical, but I think it, I think it's true across the board, right? So not even, yes. not even limited to the platforms. You take a company like Harley Davidson, right? Yes. Steeped in tradition. Um, as the new generations came along, new generation doesn't want to drive the same bike his father and grandfather, you know, rode, right? They want something really right. cool. They don't want a gas guzzler. They want something responsible for the environment. So Harley mm -hmm. kind of like shut their eyes and like blocked out these, these millennials coming up. And now they're in a huge problem because there's a total disconnect between the traditionalists and the hardcore Harley lovers versus this new market because your old yes. market's gonna gonna age out, and now they mm -hmm. have absolutely no appeal to this new market that they mm -hmm. just shut out for a while. So, right. yeah, social media, young kids, uh, you know, it's always going to be an issue of keeping in keeping relevant, as you put it, keeping it, mm -hmm. uh, you know, on topic. Yeah, yeah, for sure, definitely, and that's um great example, Harley Davidson, because I I definitely see it. It's definitely, I mean, you anyone that kind of knows about that and knows of their brand, you you immediately think of an older demographic. You kind of get your you kind of picture a, a a person in your head, and typically it's an older person, and unless they do something, you know, drastically different, then they're going to be an example of a brand that you know when their older generation um, you know, moves on and is are no longer able to, you know, to, um, you know, to ride their vehicles, then, you know, what's <laughs> who's left. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah it's going to be, it's gonna be a lot of brands, unfortunately, in that, um, that's going to have that dilemma. So it's, it is going to be interesting to see what happens Absolutely. with some of these, with some of these older brands that have been around for a long time. Well, uh, Jesse, this has been an awesome conversation. Um, can definitely talk about differentiation and marketing for a long time because I think it's really a key uh, um, pillar to marketing. You always have to be different. You always have to stand out from the next and from your competitors. So it's something I think always needs to be in the forefront of your mind as a as a brand owner or as a marketer. And so, uh, but lastly, uh, I always like to shift gears just a little bit, just so our audience can get to know you a little bit better. If you don't mind sharing one closing fun fact about yourself that you think we'd be interested to know. Uh, sure. So uh, in my book, I tell a couple of stories about, uh, you know, how I got to where I am. And I think two notable stories, and I'm happy to elaborate if we have time. Um, one story is I came extremely close to building a website for the mafia. And oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> the second story is I actually built a website for the insane clown posse. I won okay. a, I won a website design contest and I spent the weekend. They flew me out living with, uh, as they claim the world's most hated band. So, okay. Uh, <laughs> Interesting stuff. Okay. I almost developed a website for the mafia and, uh, developed a website for the insane clown mafia yeah i'm familiar with that group they're they're like a, is, if i'm not mistaken they're like a heavy metal group and they always are masked in a clown type of yes, evil clown type of masking two guys they wear yeah. uh clown makeup um yeah. and they're more rappers than metal okay um, got it got and they it. just they, they they rap about the stupidest stuff but it's okay. so well to me it's very well done and okay. uh you know as far as pop culture goes they're like the punching bag you know they got made fun of by Saturday Night Live and mm -hmm. they become like this meme, but uh, they say they're the most hated band in the world. So at okay. the weekend, gotcha. we're the most hated band in the world. <laughs> in interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. Well, thank you for sharing that and uh, really appreciate you sharing that and having you on. And uh, lastly, before we do let you go, if you don't mind sharing the best way for our listeners and viewers to get a hold of you if they'd like to reach out to you and pick your brain anymore about differentiation or, or any other marketing subject. Sure. Sure. So, uh, just released a book called marketing for supervillains. 
um, available on Amazon uh, and pretty much everywhere else online. Um, if you wanted to uh, chat with me, I'm very, very active on Instagram and TikTok under mm -hmm. Marketing Supervillain. Um, and my website is decommoditized.com. I know it's difficult to spell, so we bought a whole bunch of domains of the different spellings people might mistake. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you can also reach me through marketingforsupervillains.com. Okay, awesome, awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that, Jesse. We'll definitely have both of those links uh, to those websites in the show notes so people can reach out to you and, and pick your brain and uh, see how you can assist them in their brands. Great. Well, this has been awesome once again, Jesse. We really appreciate having you on the e-commerce marketing podcast. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the e-commerce marketing podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, and share it with everyone you know. Are you looking to take your digital marketing to the next level, but are tired of weeding through countless YouTube videos with unproven and untrusted marketing strategies? Well, we have the answer for you. The More Sales Every Month Online Digital Marketing Course. In this information-packed course, you will learn effective keyword research, link building, content marketing, and much more to attract and convert your site visitors into paying customers. Just go to moresaleseverymonth.com and sign up today for a low one-time fee. In addition to this power-packed course, if you would like to get access to a growing repository of digital marketing articles, PDFs, and eBooks, check out getosi.com resources and opt in to get full access to our library of priceless marketing information to help you take your digital marketing to the next level.